Okay, to continue my creature, it's a good time. It's, it's been a few days since I've looked at it. It's a good time to get reacquainted. And honestly, if I just squint at it and look at it quickly, its shape reads very well, but it just reads like a chicken, a chicken with a tongue and an odd tail. So this is a good point where you might reassess a little bit before we get into the really fine finishing work of the proportions you've chosen. Remember we are, or I am being inspired by these silhouettes of Pokemon. And so one thing I haven't used are the bear claws on the wings. So that might be one thing I consider. And I have some good, good references I could bring in with that. And just to kind of review what we've done, I'm going to take that, do a loose cutout of a bear claw with the lasso. Well, the resolution is plenty high, but it is a little blasted out here. Duplicate that, delete the smart layer. Go to my copy layer, transform it, shrink it down, holding down shift so it doesn't distort. and then realize, well, maybe that's not the exact right angle I want. And do that as quickly as possible so you don't waste a lot of time because it has to line up to the right angle. So for it to work, I think this might be a better example. The lighting's a little better. The angle's definitely more descriptive. I have a little bit more overlap to work with, with the textures, which is always helpful, though it will be harder to cut out. Duplicate that, get rid of the smart layer, transform the duplicate, and start thinking of it as an element, not just to the texture of what I'm doing, but to the actual silhouette. If it doesn't affect the outside shape at this point, then I'm not that concerned about it. I can warp it a little. Oh, not that much. Remember, organic things are easier to work with because you can stretch them. And I start thinking, yeah, that's going to help that outside shape, especially those kind of spikes. Maybe distort it a little. Just pull it out on this side because I get to say how those claws work. Right? And then how do I cut it out? Well, I'm going to show you some kind of copy paste tricks today. The only place I'm really concerned with cutting it out cleanly are on this outside edge. So I'm just going to go right in with my lasso tool and do slightly less rough cutout, really making sure I get around these claws. And I can do it section by section. And it's best to do it with your stylus because you can be more accurate with that than with your mouse and it's okay to bite in a little too much. Taking me a few starts here. I want to leave some of these hairs. You just take it section by section, then you hit delete. The reason I'm not using magic wand is because the background behind the bear claws is so varied. As to be <coughs> extremely difficult to cut out. And so here I'm going to kind of make my own fur edge, but get rid of that green. And take that whole swath out. And then, oops, same thing back to here, just using the lasso. These are rough cuts, but more targeted. And they really kind of fit with those porcupine spines that I added in. These little spindly hairs. Now, because each layer is separate, I don't need to worry about deleting from another layer that maybe overlaps it. So I zoom out and I start to see how that's going to affect 
my outside edge. Then to clean it up, I use my magic wand. I select the empty space. And then I'm going to use select and mask. I'm going to have it remember my settings. It bites in and feathers. I have it set to feather quite a bit. I might take that down a little because feathering 59 pixels is a little extreme. It goes for another project. So I only want to feather a couple pixels. There we go. And then say OK. And then delete. And I'll just soften, soften the edge ever so much. So to show that to you again, I'll undo it and then do it. Say OK. We'll remember my settings. Then I hit delete once, it softens it a little bit. Hit delete again, it softens it more. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. <coughs> okay, then I can go in with my eraser if I need to at 100%. And a slightly harder edge, maybe about a 70 or 80% hardness brush for my eraser. Pressure sensitive to size using my stylus. And I can do a much better job kind of smoothing it out, finding the edge I want to keep, getting around these little hairs. So this is the fine tuning. Notice I have that gray background behind it, which really helps. Kind of shows me where my edge is. It's like a green screen. You want to be able to select this creature and put it into a new environment. For assignment three, we'll be putting it into your landscape. So you don't want to have floating stuff around it that distracts. And then lastly here. Now I'm spending a lot of time on this bear claw. It's a new element that helps my silhouette be a little bit more interesting. But you are under no obligation to use a brand new element in yours. But you do want to have a silhouette that you're interested in. This is, these are our final decisions. There we go. So by having that pressure sensitive eraser at 100%, I can just kind of flick it and simulate this hair. A little bit more believably. Okay, now why am I spending so much time cleaning this up on the outside edge? And I'm not too worried about in here. Well, because I want this same sort of shape on this wing. And so what I'm going to do, instead of bringing it in again from its reference, is I'm going to play with the bear claws levels, which is, again, another tool we're always going to, to use to, to match, getting those midtones a little bit darker, maybe limit the highlights somewhat so it sinks back, and then playing with its color balance taking a little bit of that red out of it. Let's say we like that. Now I can just take my eraser at 100% opacity, but really large and soft, and take out the hard edge on this side, anything that overlaps with the wing. And now before I do too much to blend these together, though I'll be showing you how to do that today with Clone Stamp, I'm going to duplicate it because you might need to do this. I don't have another bear claw that's as good as that one. So I'm going to duplicate it. Command J and then Command T and flip it horizontally. And then work with warp and distort. Actually, let's see. Let's not flip it horizontally.
There we go. Let's just rotate it. And then let me warp it and distort it so it doesn't feel like it's just a copy and paste of the other. You know that it fits the anatomy. that I need for the back of that wing. Without pushing it so much that it loses its structure. Again, I'm actually looking at my navigator here. I'm always thinking of that overall shape. How can I make that more, more interesting, more dynamic? Now all the cutout that I did over here kind of pays off. Now I'm going to use dodge and burn. So I'm going to burn at a low exposure, pretty large brush. This backside, so the lighting's different, right? Because we're looking at the underside of the wing here. Burn the tips of the claws a little bit differently. And on this one, not going to burn in quite the same places so that they're treated very differently and they're seen as very differently. I should also probably treat the color balance a little differently. Maybe in the highlights I'll give it a little bit more red. Yeah, that helps on that wing. Okay, so I like how that's helping with the silhouette. The last thing I don't like is that, well, there's maybe a few other things. The head, this is just revisiting what I already have. I don't like how the head looks just like a chicken head, but I've replaced the beak with like a lizard snout. And there's a few reasons for that. I think it has a lot to do with the eye. So I'm going to play a little bit more with how I distort the eye. Now, if I want to be really safe with this, I'll make a duplicate of that layer and just play on a copy. So I hit Command T. I'm going to warp and I'm going to squint the eye a little differently. So it looks a little leaner, a little more reptilian. And now I can say, okay, do I like that better or do I like this better? And it shows me, you know, little things I can do to kind of push it. And then there, of course, there's the, the lizard's mouth as well. So instead of making a duplicate of that whole layer and messing with it, I can just take the snout and tongue. I can duplicate that and try extending it, making it a little bit more dramatic. then erasing the layer behind it. And I think I do like that. It's a little less chicken-like, a little more dragon-ish. Who doesn't love dragons? All right. So to get a really clean erase of that tongue in the background, I'm just going to use my lasso and just delete it completely. And now I can tweak this more accurately with warp and just kind of tuck it back to exactly where I want. Yeah. Okay, next, the other thing that makes it look too chicken like, even though the tail is very different, these claws are just all very clearly bird claws, right? Though the bear claws help up here and that fur texture of the tail helps and the porcupine quills help and all that stuff helps. I'm thinking I need to revisit the, the legs and maybe use these talons but use different legs to get to them. And I want something furry. So I'm gonna use these squirrel legs. 